Some games are known for their freedom, some are known for their layered narratives, and some of them have crazy ass boss fights. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 games with the best boss fights. Starting off with number 10, it's God of War 3. In just terms of pure spectacle, the third God of War, ah, uh, good luck beating it. I mean, we're talking about a game on very like old hardware that maybe not in terms of visual fidelity holds up completely to everything today but man in terms of spectacle like this game somehow manages to take these fights that are really tightly scripted and completely crazy but they have all of this mechanical depth that stopped them from becoming a bunch of qtes like right from the start of the game it throws you completely into this over-the-top boss fight against poseidon you know the god poseidon and that's just a taste <laughs> I mean, the entire series is filled with these amazing boss fights, including the reboot games, although they're very different in terms of what they are. Still probably my favorite boss battle in the series is from God of War 3, and it's where you take on Kronos. The scale is just so mind-blowing. Like, Kratos is literally smaller than his finger, and somehow it's just this epic boss fight that Kratos can win. Uh, God of War 3 doesn't have as many bosses as God of War 2, and I think that there are people that actually prefer God of War Ragnarok's battles. They're all fantastic, really, but none of them, in my opinion, are quite as crazy as the fights in God of War 3, and that is a perfect start off for this list. And number nine is Hollow Knight. A, a good boss fight isn't just spectacle. It's also the fundamentals. And it sucks. I, I, I'm going to say this before we get going too far into it, but 2D games are going to be pretty underrepresented on this list. I did have to it, it get at least one on here, though. And if I'm going to do that, it's going to be Hollow Knight. Uh, this is an indie Metroid style action game that is just fundamentals done to perfection. You got a basic attack, a dodge, a few magic attacks. You're probably not going to use those a lot. And that's about it. Now, the game manages to take that simplistic core, though, and stretch it as far as humanly possible. Uh, it's just pure game design. It's simple. Uh, uh, the bosses have easy-to-read attack patterns, weaknesses, and openings that you can exploit. Uh, what really, I think, makes Hollow Knight stand out is just how many bosses the game has. There's a ton. There's 47 if you count all the variants. That's a huge amount of bosses, and nearly all of them are fantastic, exciting, and just a hell of a fight. They're not soul-crushingly hard, necessarily, either. All the main ones are fairly reasonable. It's only when you get to the end game that they really start to get kind of ridiculous, and, and some of the secret stuff, it's gonna throw you. It's just a great game, uh, and sometimes it's not necessarily complicated, but these are always fun boss fights. At number eight is Metal Gear Solid Revengeance. Uh, duh. Platinum Games, pretty much the masters of the boss fight, but I think 2013's Revengeance is still kind of their magnum opus. It's not a super long game, and there's not a huge amount of bosses, but every single one of them is like a work of art. One of the greatest boss fight innovations they introduced in this game was the dynamic soundtrack. Uh, now, it's not the first game that had a dynamic soundtrack during a boss fight, but the way the game has the music change and get more intense as the fight progresses, it's gonna be a big part of the lasting legacy see this game it's just brilliant like at the start of the fight the music's a little more subdued instrumental but as you do more damage to the boss it gets more intense everything starts to flip out and then lyrics kick in and it's just like what is happening It's incredibly badass. It's basically the template that Sonic Frontiers followed for its boss fights. And it's hilarious to say that a Sonic game did that. But we're talking about Platinum, the creators of Bayonetta, Wonderful 101, Vanquish. Of course, other people are going to take hard inspiration from them. And as they should, Revengeance is genuinely just a game that doesn't just earn a spot on this list. If we really wanted to, we could just like talk about the bosses and Revengeance all day. 
And number seven is Ninja Gaiden Black. The game, it, it's almost like 20 years old now, but its boss fights are just legendary. There are a couple of not so good ones, but like this game has a killer's row of fantastic bosses. The thing is, is they're kind of easy to overlook when you're talking about the game as a whole. Uh, when a game is this old, there's bound to be some clunkers that don't really add a lot. But when you got bosses like Murai, the first boss, or Doku, the ghostly samurai, or the ludicrously hard Alma. Then, then some of the forgettable ones like Hydra Cubus, the big stupid tentacle thing, they don't stand out that much. The best bosses in Ninja Gaiden Black throw everything at you. They're intense, they can kill you in an instant, but you feel like an unstoppable badass when you overcome them. And you should because you're a badass ninja who is capable of taking this kind of crap down. Some of them uh, might be dangerously close to being considered unfair even, especially when you get hit out of nowhere with an unblockable throw. But the gameplay is so smooth and the combat's so fun, even if you're dying a lot, that drive to win remains. It's one of those games that does just a fantastic job of not discouraging you when you die. And I'll say this, compared to a lot of other games on this list, this one's definitely a little more hit and miss in the boss department, but the good ones are so good, it would feel wrong to leave it off. And number six is Metal Gear Solid 3. Like, this one's the best in a series of greats. The entire Metal Gear series is filled with legendary boss encounters like Psycho Mantis in the first. But, I mean, the game with the best lineup of bosses is 3. It's not even a question. Every single fight in this game is incredible. It's unique. It's interesting. There's multiple ways to solve them. They're challenging without being brutal. Like, everything ticks every box. What makes Metal Gear games so different is how a lot of the bosses feel like puzzles that you have to solve rather than just a guy you gotta unload a machine gun into. Like, you have to figure out how to beat them. 3 probably has the weirdest boss lineup in the series, too. I mean, the first member of Cobra Unit you fight is The Pain, a guy who fights you with bees. I'll say that again, a guy who fights you with bees. And it only gets weirder. A special mention has to go in uh, on the end, the master sniper who forces you to approach a boss fight in an entirely different way. Uh, instead of an action-packed shootout, you have to slowly and methodically hunt him down in what the game describes as a grueling sniper duel. Or just wait till he dies. You can do that too, because he's super old. He's dead. What the hell happened? Maybe it was from old age. You mean he kicked the bucket in the middle of a battle? Maybe. Well, Snake, the victory is yours. Another big standout is the Sorrow, this ghost that forces you to confront every enemy you've killed. All these guys are super weird and, and super memorable, and they're a lot of the reasons why Metal Gear Solid is considered by many to be the high point of the franchise. And number five is Devil May Cry 5. This is a series that basically invented the character action game. Uh, its boss has cast a long shadow over the entire action game landscape, too. All the games in the series had these incredible bosses, but the most recent is somehow the best. It's got the most fluid and fun combat in the series, and along with that great combat, it's just a, the best bosses. Pretty much every one of them feels fresh and fun to fight. The V bosses are probably the low point, just because of how unusual V's playstyle is compared to Dante and Nero, but they're still fun, and every other boss is so good that it hardly matters. These guys aren't the insane spectacle of something like Bayonetta. Instead, they're just solid fundamentals. Every boss has a ton of moves, cool designs, plenty of unpredictable stuff that it's going to throw at you and keep you on your toes. If there is one fight that really earns this game a spot on the list, though, it's the final battle against Virgil. The Virgil boss fights are always the best ones in their respective games, and the one in DMC5 is the best in the franchise. It's intense, exciting, epic, everything you would ever want in a boss battle. Uh, it's so fantastic, it's deep, it's challenging, it's, it's easily one of the best boss fights of all time. If this game really is the end of the DMC series, it ended on a high note. And number four is Undertale, another genre that, it, unfortunately, it's kind of underrepresented in this list because it's a JRPG, and it's, while there are some pretty memorable bosses, some of the most memorable bosses of all time that come out of JRPGs, these are also very long games, and it's hard to make a game that is long and all killer, no filler. That said, JRPGs have some crazy spectacle and often some crazy, fantastic music to go with it. Undertale is a game that understood just how effective a JRPG boss battle can be and found ways to make it more dramatic. 
Right, now, what makes Undertale unique is how it plays with the standard formula. Instead of just being a back and forth like your average JRPG, it makes every boss fight unique and ha they all have their own mechanics. Like Papyrus, the first major boss of the game, normally when you're avoiding attacks, you can free roam on the screen, but for this fight, you're stuck and you can only jump. Pretty much every boss has some twist in the formula like that. Visually, all obviously pretty basic, but the great soundtrack and constant tweaking of the formula really makes these bosses a lot of fun to fight. When the game wants to get dramatic, that's when it really goes all out on these bosses too. Many of the most effective moments in the game don't happen in cutscenes, they happen in boss fights. The way the game integrates gameplay into its story is just brilliant, and some of the more entertaining elements of the whole game are just right there. And you're starting to see more games try to emulate that style too. And number three is Shadow of the Colossus. If you're making a game that's basically all boss battles, they better be good. And uh, the developers behind Shadow of the Colossus understood that because nearly every battle in this game is fantastic. Unlike the intense showdowns that happen in the most of the games on these lists, these fights are a little more subdued. Uh, at least they're subdued in that the whole point of this game is to hunt down and kill a bunch of gigantic stone creatures. Uh, every encounter is basically a puzzle where you have to figure out how to reach each of the Colossi's weak points. Sometimes this is done by grabbing onto their fur and climbing. Other times it forces you to be more aggressive. And sometimes it's literally pure puzzle solving. Each fight is punctuated by the game's stellar soundtrack and almost every fight is completely different. Compared to some of the over the top stuff you get with other boss battles, the quiet, almost tragic nature of these battles really still stands out today. At number two is Monster Hunter World. These games are all about hunting monsters. That's it. That's the goal. That's the gameplay. That's everything. Absolutely everything that you do in Monster Hunter revolves around hunting monsters, and the formula is perhaps at its most refined in Monster Hunter World. In variety, in amount, in quality, few games can match this one when it comes to bosses. Every single beast is a unique boss fight, and if you count the Iceborne expansion, then World has a whopping 67 monsters to fight, give or take. That's a lot of beasts to bring down, each requiring its own strategies to do so. Playing by yourself, every battle is a test of endurance as well as skill. These fights are designed to go long, and managing your resources as well as striking at the right moment are just as important as anything else. In general, the Monster Hunter games don't play quite like any other action games out there. Positioning and timing are incredibly important because your character moves with weight that can feel sluggish coming off of other games, and getting a good hit requires precision movement and facing because there's no lock-on. Monster Hunter World is a boss fighter's dream just for the variety and quality of every single battle in the game. And finally, at number one, from software games. Like, what else could be number one, right? Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro, Elden Ring, all of these games have fantastic bosses. Uh, but I just don't want to fill the entire list up with from games, so let's quarantine them here in a single point. There's almost too many good fights to list. It's just an endless parade of quality. From Software is well known at this point for their ball-bustingly hard games with some truly epic boss battles. And as much as world design is a big part of the appeal of their games, the highlights are always the bosses. From the more experimental early games where nearly half the bosses are weird puzzles to the more modern, refined bosses of Elden Ring, there's always something interesting going on with these bosses. There's almost no reason to call out any specific guy they're just so good. There's plenty of bad, believe me. There's more than enough stinkers in here for sure. Like, remember the bed of chaos? I, I don't know what they were smoking when they designed that thing. But From has so many bosses that are just among the best of all time. Think Artorus from Dark Souls, or the Sword Saint from Sekiro, or Ludwig from Bloodborne, and, and that's just naming a few. Each game of theirs has at least one truly iconic boss, and usually there's more than one. For almost single-handedly making boss fights cool again, From Software earns a special place on this list. I know this one's kind of a cop-out, but there's just way too many to pick from. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course of subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.